<laughs> I know. Oh, I know. Hey, look at there's you. I don't see a two-dimensional space, human. <laughs> <laughs> That's nonsense. Well, are you getting antsy to get back into our tiny home on wheels? Yeah, me too. Should probably get at it, huh? Good girl. Protein shake. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. <sighs> Let's have a little chat before we get things started, shall we? So we're getting really close here to being done. Uh, still a lot to do, obviously, like I showed off at the end of the last video. We got a lot of stuff to cover up and finish up. Like, this is nowhere near being finished. We got to finish that countertop. I've been debating what I wanted to start with. That's kind of like I woke up way too early, thanks to the Pirate Princess for getting me on that schedule when she was here last week. And I edited the next vlog and then I'm sitting there like, hey, what am I gonna tackle today? Because I'm, I'm getting antsy and exciting. I, I, exciting, excited. I'm, get, I'm getting antsy and excited. I wanna move back into the van and, and start utilizing all this stuff. I got our new fridge, our swivel seat, our giant ass bed. It's a matter of now, where do I focus so that I stay sort of efficient? You know what I mean? So it's a little rainy today. So woodworking probably wouldn't be the best, although I do have the covered shop. I'm just making excuses, blah, blah, blah. Put a pin in it. I think woodworking we will attempt to tackle tomorrow. And that will be turning that into an actual cupboard, turning this into what I want it to be, adding what I need to add and whatnot. And today, we're gonna focus on electrical. It's, it's hard because I know a lot of people want me to do an in-depth electrical video, and I will do as much as I can uh, and still keep it entertaining for everybody else. So there'll be a lot of, this is how I do this, and now I gotta do it eight more times and we'll just cut to when it's done. But we'll go over things uh, a little bit more in depth as well. I'm just, I'm getting a little sick and tired of not having the house lights in here. That being said, just like slapping all of the power as it once was back isn't really an option. We're gonna have to trim a whole bunch of wires, right? We've got our Two uh, solar cables coming in here. They have to be extended to reach into the power box. This wire here is the f wire to the fan in the rear. So it's gonna, well, maybe have to be trimmed up, not so sure, but it's gonna have to run into the box because I think what I'm going to do is we're gonna take our fuse panel, which is right there, which used to live like behind the driver's seat. I think I'm gonna put it in here as well. So we gotta make this all neat and tidy, make sure we can get everything to fit. We've got, where is it? Where did it go? It's somewhere. I've already lost it. Oh, no, there it is. Underneath my assorted tray of goodies. We've got our brand new 50 amp DC to DC onboard battery charger with MPPT. For those that don't know what that means. This is what will allow me to charge my house batteries when I'm driving in Lucky and from the solar panels. So it's like the two things that I had before in one. Huge shout out again to Bill. Thank you very much for that, sir. Greatly appreciate it. So we gotta get that in there. We gotta get our battery charger in there somewhere wherever it's going to go. We gotta probably get this giant ass fridge the yuck out of here. One thing I did earlier is I was out here and I ran back there, my actual shoreline uh, power bar. So before it was just sort of flopping around here everywhere. I've plugged it in, I ran it behind the fridge and it is temporarily mounted right there on the wall. It's just held on by like shoddy Velcro for now. I'm pretty sure that's where I'm gonna want it to live. It's sort of tucked away out of sight, which is really nice. Um, so that's where we'll pull all of our shore power from for the time being. I'm gonna have to get my work light set up. Um, and also, 
when it comes to this fridge, um, this will be more of a cupboard video, so tomorrow, but the fridge has these removable handles, that's great, but it also has these doohickeys that are for uh, an accessory you can buy that you can put a handle on here and then wheels go on the other side of the fridge and you can roll it like a suitcase. I don't plan on doing any of that. I was trying to see if these would be removable. There are screws at the bottom, but I don't see that being what allows them to come completely off. We will take a look later. If I can't get these two things off, we're gonna have to notch into the foot of the bed here so that these can actually sit in because that, well, it might not seem like it on the camera. From here to there, that's quite a bit of space. I don't wanna lose that much space up here on my cupboard. Sorry, I'm already off track. Happens a lot around these parts. Electrical. So we are going to be wiring together our two house batteries. We've got a 200 amp hour battery and a 100 amp hour battery. They're both 12 volt. We are going to wire them in parallel, which means this one's negative is gonna to connect to that one's negative. That one's positive is gonna to connect to that one's positive. There's a lot of people that don't think that's a good idea, but you gotta go with what you have. I've done enough reading and I found a very thorough article that says it's completely possible to do this. Uh, the, the problem is, is because one's 200 and one's 100, that's where the discrepancy comes in. People are like, don't do it, you're gonna explode. You won't explode. There might be diminished returns and longevity of batteries, blah, 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 blah. Essentially what putting them together in parallel means is that they will then become a 300 amp hour battery that works together. The other way of connecting batteries is in series but that would keep the amp hours the same and increase your voltage. So you do that to two 12 volt batteries, they then become a 24 volt battery. That's how I did my old, in Lucky 1.0, when I still had the flooded batteries, they were two six volt batteries. So I put them together in series and that's how I got a 12 volt system. Uh, that is very ill-advised and don't do that. That's a big no-no when you have different amp hour batteries, right? Because then nothing's the same. I don't understand the science behind it. If you want to do your own reading, I highly recommend you do that. But that's what I'm going to do. We're going to put them together. We're going to get our battery charge in there. Some people think this doesn't charge lithium. This thing absolutely does charge lithium and LifePo4 batteries, which are basically the same, but a little bit different. I looked up in the manual on this thing and it absolutely will charge my batteries, no problem. So get all of that done. Then we got to get our fuse panel in here. We gotta get our bus bars attached and everything. We'll go over all this more in detail later. We got our inverter over there. I still gotta figure out how I'm gonna do that. And what else? Oh, the shunt for our battery monitor, which is around here somewhere. There it is, battery monitor. I'm not 100% sure where I want that to live. My first thought was I would put it right beside the inverter switch, which is here, but I don't particularly wanna cut another hole here. Um, and I would like to be able to see the battery monitor sort of from a more general location in the van. So I'm envisioning some sort of little mounting box up here. And now that we have come up here, I think this is where I'm going to start. And that is by tearing down this. Oh, do I want to do that? It's in there so nice. Oh, look, visitors. Hello, off on our walk, where are we? Why are you hiding? I was knocking. Oh, you were knocking, thank you so much. How are you? Good. We uh, finished the walk. It's yes. Raining. It is raining. A little bit. A little bit. On and off. Yes. I know. I like this. Better than the oh, snow in Calgary. Really. It's much better than the snow in Calgary, yes. All right, that was actually a good little break because it gave me a chance to collect my thoughts. I was looking at, before mom and dad came up, uh, considering getting rid of these this white trim up here, right? Um, it's old entertainment unit that I hacked down. It's, some of it was, used to be holding the roof up. I guess I could just brace that. I was gonna rip it all off. It's actually cut in two, right about there. So it is two boards. Um, and then I was just gonna redo plywood and put it up because that's actually covering up uh, like this like channel in the van body that stuffed, I stuffed it with the like fiberglass insulation when I first built Lucky. Um, but I think instead of taking that off, because it's, like I said, it was a pain in the butt to get up there. And my little RGB LEDs are actually on the underside of it, and they're still wired in. We just gotta give them power. Um, I think I'll leave that up there, but we will take down, there's nasty bits of tape over there that have been hiding wires, obviously doing a piss poor job now because you can see all of that there. Um, so yeah, this is literally just me thinking out loud now, and I was just tightening up the clamp on my phone. It was a little loosey-goosey. Now I'm most likely gonna have to go to Silverton to get a few things. I know I'm gonna go tomorrow because I gotta get more wood. <laughs> I hate when I'm out of wood. But um, 
I'm probably gonna need stuff like loom and maybe some more clamps to like hold wires together. I don't even know if they have that stuff there. They should, um, because most of these wires are gonna be sort of congregating right here and they're gonna run down the wall there to go into the power box. That's literally my only option. And obviously you don't want just a ton of wires hanging out because this looks nasty AF. So I don't have enough loom for that right now, but that can definitely be like a last step, make it look pretty, I think. And I've got plans potentially for this area here uh, for another one of these maybe. Similar, smaller, but similar for more storage over here. But I'll definitely, that means I would have to move those two pot lights, that one there and that little tiny one back there. I mean, it's not tiny. It's the same size as, as all of them. It's just, you know, perspective. First things first, let's get this bloody fridge out of here so we have room to put this light up here and all good things. I think we will just put the fridge in grace. What do we got in here right now? Oh yes, all of our tea. Fridge can sit on top of the tea. The wolf pack there, that there. Yeah, what could possibly go wrong? All right, turns out the ice maker compartment is not completely waterproof. So if you're gonna move this fridge when it's full of not frozen water, do it carefully. All right, you know what? While we're here, I'm gonna pop those screws out and see if they do anything. Watch this, so like the whole fridge just falls apart. That'd be, oh, is this one too big? Is Phillips too large? Nope. Oh my, whoop, oh, that was, that was tiny. All right, so imagine this was just some sort of simple clip thing. Come on. Oh, oh, heck yeah. Oh, maybe this has to be removed from when you put the handle on. These are just covers. Well, that's definitely shorter. Ooh, I might still have to like get that off. I don't know. I could always just Dremel it. <laughs> Pop this off. Yeah, I'm imagining if I really want to make this as tight to the bed as possible, I may have to customize the new fridge and just Remove that screw, that screw, and use the Dremel to just That is most definitely a future Matthew problem. Yikes. Now we got a little bit more room to maneuver in here for now, which is great. So let's turn this bad boy on. He's not plugged in. You can go there. Boom, that is, that is much better. All right, we got a little space heater going here to keep us warm until the day decides to smarten up. It's not that bad, like that said. Still better than Calgary. We are gonna start very basic here. Um, I did, I moved the battery because we've got the vent here, right? But I had to remove the brace. So first things first, we're going to reattach our little brace that holds the big boy in. All right, so this was literally just a piece of scrap plywood that I cut to the length that I needed. And then we just go in to make sure we hold it nice and tight. And, really oh. Right? This will just give some obvious whoop, stability when we are, uh, you know, bouncing around in lucky. <sighs> the sun is coming out. It's already warming up. Maybe it's also because I'm right next to the bloody heater. I'm gonna take my toque off. Turn this to 35. I say nay. 13. Mucho better. Okay, so one thing we're gonna do here first while I'm getting everything ready is we're gonna charge both of these batteries up. Now I've already done that, so I'm sure they are fine, but just to err on the side of caution, we want them both to be at 100%. So we got this guy attached to our big battery. So we're gonna turn it on and okay, we're gonna hold it to get down to the 12 volt lithium setting. Let's go. Come on, you. There we go. Boom, it's gonna kick on. There we go. While that is doing that, just to save time, I'm gonna come back here to our fancy drawer system. And I th think I put my other battery charger. Yep. There she be. So we'll grab this guy, which is the one that I was using for the most part in the last build, actually. <sighs> We're gonna attach him to the little guy again, like we did when we were spray painting Lucky and just make sure he stopped up. All right, so we got the leads on that battery. We're gonna find the plug. Come over here, we'll plug it in to our shore power up here. It comes to life. It's already set to lithium, so it should, again, detect, detect. There it goes. It's a little quieter 
It's a little smaller. So yeah, this one's already good to go more or less. We'll wait till that ticks up and I'm going to go grab that big ass box of cables. Oh. Ah, all sorts of goodies in here. So this stuff is all wire that was already in Lucky. Bring that out. Uh, yeah, that too. That too. We got thinner wire here when needed. We got a whole bunch of lugs and heat shrink. We've got one aught black wire. I believe this is the same thing. One aught black wire. So I'll probably use this to connect the batteries. Nice and large. I'll probably use that to connect the batteries and run to the bus bars. And then we've got a giant roll of heat shrink and uh, even more heat shrink. We've got the butt connectors that I ordered for my solar cables. And we got a whole bunch of copper lugs. So we should have everything we need to wire the bejeebus out of Lucky 2.0. I'm going to have a seat here because there's stuff on my swivel seat right now. Plus, I've got more flat surface on the floor here to work. So I just measured the distance between the two negative posts and the two positive posts on both of those batteries. So positives about two feet and uh, the negatives are 25 inches, which is two feet and one inch. I don't know it in centimeters, okay? That's not how I learned. We got 25 feet of cable here. I think we got enough. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut myself off lengths that I need. And what, and since it's all black wire, I'm just going to use the heat shrink because I've got red and black heat shrink to indicate which one's which. At, at, yeah, that's only for at a glance as well, so. Uh, get the twist ties off. Yeah, get the, get the good stuff. Ooh, power or ground wire. Says it right on a wire. <laughs> Grab an end here. Toss that into the van. Yikes. You got a tape measure here. Oh, to 25 inches. Did I get your text? No. I'll go with you to Silverton when you go. <laughs> no. How do you, what do you mean when I go? Did I say I was going? Yeah, you said you had to go get another board or something. Well, I was going to be tomorrow. But the funny thing is, is yes, I will probably go later as well. <laughs> Bloody Silverton building supplies. Okay, so let's do our negative first. We'll put the tape measure here. Uh, Going to measure off. Wait a second. I can make this easier on myself. Don't bury the tool that I need, which is these big fancy wire snippy snips. Should I use the gloves? Woo! Yeah, why not? We'll be fancy, even though they're probably gonna be super tight on me. Oh, nope, not at all. Oh, there's two pairs. So you and a buddy can wire together, or if the glove rips the first time you put it on. Anyway, get out our cutters. Measure out 25 inches, more or less. Move the bloody blend jet. Cool, so right on my nail. Maybe we'll give it just a little bit more to be on the safe side. Wait a second, because if I cut back, oh no, we should be still be fine. Trying to think about the lug, the length of the lugs as well. Snippy snip. Oh, I love these things so much. All right, now we need 24 for a positive. Let's just do 225, this is ridiculous. The wire can be a little... <clears throat> you don't understand. If you haven't been around the channel very long, how harder it was for me to cut wire this thickness in the early days. My God. All right, I'm down here on Lucky's schmutzy floor. We'll take care of that later. We got our lug nuts here. You can see that they are for one aught wire. Exactly. We're gonna need four of these. I'm assuming they're all the same size. It should say on here. Yeah, stud size three eighths. And I've got the extra studs here that come with the batteries. It's definitely gonna work. I just wanted to make sure. See, there you go. Very fancy. Okay, so put those to the side. Definitely gonna lose those. Watch me whip, watch me name. So now what we have to do, let's put this away. Thank you. Is we gotta take the end of the wire. You go about like that, and you can see, right? And right there is how we gotta strip. Now to strip this, it's gonna be a little bit more tricky. I don't have, I just gotta have to, I'm gonna use the cutters and just sort of gently cut in because we just want to remove the, the the shielding right so if you just twist this is way easier than using a knife kind of make a cut all around we should be able to <laughs> there you go and then our luggy lug is gonna go well but yes the wire will shed sometimes when it comes to connecting these you do have a couple options um you can either like crimp which that's what these, this other tool is for that came with this stuff. 
Um, you can solder or you can cold weld. Solder is usually the best option to go with. It's the most like permanent. Out of curiosity, I wanna see how well these crimpers work. These things will crimp, I don't even know the range. They will do this, and then they will also do two gauge, six gauge, one gauge, four gauge, and eight gauge. Well, this is one aught that we're doing, so I'm pretty sure that's one aught. You can actually um, push these little nipples in, or is it push? Open them up a bit, uh, push. Yeah, if you push the nipple in, then you can rotate this wheel inside and change the wire gauge, which is super cool. Uh, let's bring it back to one. You have to do it independently. All right, so if this, if I don't like the way this feels, we're gonna redo the wire because we got a lot of it and uh, we're gonna solder. But soldering is also even, it, I don't know, if wires are you know more likely to rattle loose in the case of being in an application where they're going to be moving around a lot, so a van. But I do wanna see how this, Oh, don't let the wire slip out. And then, oh yeah, buddy. There you go. Close them up. Crampy crumped. And then let it go. Whoa, whoa. Let's see. That's... That's pretty good, honestly. I don't know, but see, enough jostling and you can pull it free. That's the only problem. So, I'm thinking solder. Although these lugs barely fit on. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give me a minute. We'll see what we do here. Try that again. Hmm. All right, so I'm gonna do what I've done on the channel before, which is a solder application. Now cold weld would be better than the crimp style that I just did um, because that actually requires, I actually have the tool somewhere. It's this little like thing, like it's a pendulum, not a pendulum. It's like a, it's a big metal shaft that you whack with a hammer and you put a lot more force. And it's essentially, let's call it a big boy crimp. That's all it is, and it works well. And I did, that's what I did before. Um, again, I don't feel like exerting that much power. So we're just gonna do this. We're gonna take a propane torch. We're gonna light it up. Boom. And all we have to do is apply some heat to the lug. Let me take our solder here. We're gonna boil it down so it's nice and melty. And then we're gonna stick in the wire, so. This is not the best application for this, but I'm just using a crescent wrench to hold the lug. I don't have vice, a vice or anything like that. But I figured it would be, it was better than using the uh, rubberized Vivor clamps that I've been using. <laughs> so once this gets hot enough, solder will just start melting into it as it do. I'm gonna have to probably take off the gloves at this point. <laughs> now that I'm using heat, I don't need gloves melting to my flesh. Solder, solder, solder. If I had thicker solder, it'd probably be better. I wouldn't need to use as much length, but I went to the shopping list for Silverton at this point. <laughs> I got a large spool. We should be fine. All right, there we go. So we got that thing full of solder. I'm going to take our wire here and splooge. That is not how you want that to look. Redo. That's the basic premise. I'm gonna do this again with less wire exposed. I'm gonna run out of lugs at this point. But as an example, before I move on, this has been just a couple seconds. If I grab this, I shouldn't be able to pull this off. No, that's like, that's the whole point of solder, right? Like, with enough force, you could probably rip this, but I think you get the idea. Now we just gotta make it prettier. There, that one looks a little bit better, eh? A little bit tidier, it's not coming off. Got the other end done as well. Now, what we will do is let's make this, eh, we'll make it our positive wire. So we'll go into our little case of heat shrink here. The one little note, um, sometimes it's a good idea to put the heat shrink on first, especially if it's like pretty tight on the wire. Um, I'm pretty sure with the eclectic amount that I have here, I'll be able to, oh yeah, squish it open and put it on over top of the lug. But sometimes you can see that that, that might not be the case, so. This is just to protect it so stuff doesn't get inside. Line it up nice and tidy to the base of the lug. Then, as the name suggests, you must apply some heat in order to shrink it, which is the literal opposite of us males. 
You can use anything. You can use a heat gun, a match, a lighter. Propane torch works very well. There you go. Move it around quickly. You don't want to end up with burn marks like that, but I did, so it's not the end of the world. Don't freak out. A little burn mark never hurt anybody. Just change your underwear. Will that be skid marks? Moving right along. Okay, I cut a new piece of wire, so we got both cables now and our little test wire we will use later because we're gonna need a shorter length anyway. But what we're gonna do first is get both of these batteries connected. We'll test these wires first to make sure they got conductivity by connecting them just to the small battery. Then we'll slap on the multimeter and make sure we got a reading. So both batteries are completely charged up. We're gonna disconnect those chargers and pucker our buttholes. Got our wires here, negative and positive, connected to negative and positive on the battery. So now what we're gonna do, just to make sure, we'll take our multimeter here, put it there, then we're gonna touch the ends to the ends of the wires, and if we get a reading of around 14 volts here, we good to go. So, positive and negative. Look at us go. Whoops. This and this is a nightmare. This is why I hate filming electrical. Ugh, positive. And just the tip, please. There we go. Good enough for me. Oh, for crying out loud, I need a cameraman. I thought I hit record. I didn't. It was, anyway. Both batteries are connected now. No sparks, no problems, no nothing. We've effectively made a 300 amp hour battery. We throw the multimeter on these. We go boop, we go boop, we get... Look at that, 14 volts. The next step is going to be what to do what I just did, but we need a negative running down here that will go to the negative bus bar. That's gonna be a straight connection. Uh, nope, might have to put the shunt in between. Gotta remember that. I will show it to you when I'm done. And then same thing, we're gonna do a small power wire to this switch and then another power wire from the switch to the positive bus bar. So let me just make those wires and then we'll catch up. <sighs> well, sun has showing itself right now. Which is quite lovely. And I must say, if you want a big old time sink, do electrical. Unbelievable. This is the state of affairs right now from a little sort of workstation I've had going here. There's been a lot of getting in and out of the van, but we were definitely making progress. So it's looking, starting to look a little neater in here and I've been testing as I go. So just to go over it real quick, get rid of the, the wires we don't need right now. This isn't on there. We just move that cover. But we got our batteries connected as we did. Then we've got wires running down. So positive goes to the switch. It works, tested it, great. So right now there's no power going to this, but you do this and all of a sudden this is energized. And then our negative, we've got a negative cable running here to our shunt. The shunt is what will make our battery monitor work. And then we've got another cable running from here to our negative bus bar, and this is our main negative. So, in here now, this is our negative, and this is our positive, and everything else will sort of get connected to that. So I've been looking at this bad boy. I got the covers off there. There's where you connect all your wires. Um, this side is the negative and the positive for the battery, so that will go to the negative and the positive. Then over on this side, we've got our solar in, which is PV, and our auxiliary, which is the, the alternator, basically. This thing has to get mounted like this, though. So, the only place to really do that is here. Of course, we can't put it on that. That is the back of our giant sliding drawer. So I've measured this out. And this is what we're gonna be doing now. We need a new backing plate. So, this has been my life right now. Find a place to step, hop down. Oh yeah, very good. Carry this bad boy here, just to make sure our measurements work. I did 28 and a half long. So this is 28 and a half. And from here to here is eight. Make sure this fits on there. Ooh, we can make it even small. Oh no, because, right. So that's perfect. So up here, we'll get attached to the electrical box. That two by two frame runs up there. So our screws will go in there. And on either side, we will have a two by two for mounting purposes. And it's actually, quite a bit longer than eight inches, but I figure this way, since I don't actually need that, we will allow airflow around this thing and the, the drawer and all that good stuff. So, all right, let's do some sawing.
here we go. There is our piece. And I'm actually glad that the universe had my back in this stance in that sense that I didn't permanently like mount this battery down yet. So I was able to sort of move him forward so I can get this piece like here, just like so. And then we just gotta get her attached. Can't do that while I'm holding a phone. I'm not gonna bother with pilot holes right now. This should be easy enough. So we're gonna go to there. Just make sure this stays. Flushy floosh like that. There we go. Ooh, maybe I should. Mm -hmm. Move it over a bit. Darn it. Start on the other side first. I knew something felt a little off. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's better. Okay. Yep, still doing this shit. Uh-oh. Well, that screw's lost forever. Now I've got room to attach screws to the vertical 2x2s as well. Hey, hey, our new charge controller is mounted. Not installed, just mounted. <sighs> this box is really starting to come together. Now for these circuit breakers, uh, specifically for the charger. So on my old system, my DC to DC charger was a 40 amp charger. So there's two places on that sort of circuit that you gotta have breakers, right? So the first one is this one that we've seen fairly recently. It's over here. So this is a 60 amp circuit breaker, right? And this is what's connected to my alternator for sake of argument, right? And then that power comes here. This is this cable that connected to the charger. And then the power line that goes out to the house batteries, it only needed to be a 50 amp circuit breaker. Now that this is a 50 amp one, I have to steal this 60 amp circuit breaker because it's going to be the one that goes from the charger to the battery, which is kind of like what I'm working on right now. And then I need minimum a 75 amp circuit breaker on that side, according to the book. I don't have one of those. So when I go to Silverton, I'll see if they have anything like that. I highly doubt they will. And then if not, I'll just order one from Amazon and then I just won't have DC to DC charging right away, but I will still have solar kind of thing. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to pilfer that 60 amp circuit breaker. Uh -huh. Next time I decide to, uh, Redo my electrical. Somebody slap me. This is a nightmare. I mean, anyway, I, here we go. So this is what I've been doing. We got the solar wires connected. We don't have the DC to DC charger wires connected, but um, I got the shunt all wired up. I'm gonna plug in the battery monitor here. Down here is where it goes. Think like this, maybe. Yes. All right, now let's get some power and see what happens. We're gonna have a whole bunch of lights probably on this thing and hopefully this lights up. Hey, it's like I knew what was gonna happen. Not gonna worry about the energy guy right now. There's our battery monitor. We actually need to reset a bunch of this. How do I go into settings again? It's been a hot minute. Oh, I'm bleeding. <laughs> what else is new? Try to remember how to use this bloody thing. There we go. All right, let's change. Yes, this. Nope, oh, gosh darn it. Ah, there we go. Up to 300. Okay. Back. Down. High. This should be... Like 14, shouldn't it? And I'll double check all of that. But anyway, reset it. Boom, 300 amp hours. Cool. So that's working. We got no no draws are happening right now, obviously. So cool. That's going to have to go all the way through there and maybe up there. Slowly been working away at it. These are the DC, these are the, well, let's just start calling them the alternator wires. These are the alternator wires that are gonna have to get extended. They don't quite uh, reach where I need them to go. That's okay, because we don't have that 75 uh, amp breaker yet. So this is all good. I'm gonna have to figure out how to set this. There's a button 
on the far side here. You press it. You probably have to press and hold, I'm assuming. Changes it to battery type. I don't know. Let me see. Red. Yeah, cool. See, it's changing the light. I'm assuming we probably want it on blue for lithium. Oops. There we go. The so solar panels aren't even plugged in on the roof yet, but the wires are all sort of temporarily zip tied together and up here on the wall, roughly where I want them to go. That's how I was able to like measure the length of the wires for once they were in the box, how they had to get to where they were going. And uh, yeah, I think it's time to step out of lucky. This place is a disaster. Mm, I may have to actually take a minute or 15 and just clean a bit because it's, it's driving me crazy. For now though, let's go into the back of the Irish Pirate Queen into our new refrigerator. Reach on in here and see what we can come up with. I love that this, bat this thing has a battery and it's just still going. Ah, yes, let's give one of these bad boys a try. First though, how much battery are we at? 83%. And that's with a freezer with nothing in it. Not too shabby. All right, let's see if this powerhouse ale is any good. <sighs> Cheers, break time. Lindsay was right, that ain't half bad for a, for a pale ale. Cool, I got another selection from Mount Begbie Brewing that I enjoy. All right, time to do a little bit of a tidy, cause my God. I did, no cleaning. Not one iota, but I did power through. I've decided to put my fuse box right there. I've moved the inverter, it's over here for now. I'm probably gonna put it against this side once I get there. Not a huge priority right now, but I got it all wired in. I got my cables under control. So we've got this 40 amp circuit breaker right there. That replaced the old style one, which was this. I've talked about this one before. I wasn't a big fan of this style because it was just strip the ends and then stuff them into these and clamp them down. So this has been replaced with this circuit breaker right here. So we got a power line coming from there up to here. That power line runs over there and to the fuse box. Then we got our negative running from there into the negative. So this has power, I've just tested it. I've just very basically have uh, these rear fan wires attached to make sure it's working. I pulled the fuse that it's attached to and the light turned red. So that tells me that there is power going to it. It's this wire here, just for the, the sake of getting up and stretching my legs. Oh, we're gonna go make sure that that fan is working. And then I think I'm done with this for now because this has just, just been nuts. Done way longer than I thought it would. Okay, so there's our fan. Let's see, do we have power to you? Ooh. Hey, look what hasn't worked in a long time. Spinny, spin, spin. We've got power through the fuse box. So now, because I put the fuse box under the bed, I'm just gonna have to run extra wire length for a few things. I, the reason I did that, um, put the fuse box in there, is because I really, I felt like I was gonna be rushing myself if I was considering building some sort of box there. I sat in my new swivel seat last night and I thought this would be a great place to sit to watch TV. And if I put a box right there, it's kind of going to be in the way. So it's easier for me to do cable management right there and then just have all the wires run down into the box and to the fuse panel. And since it's easier, that's what I decided to do. Before I call this a day, I was, I'm determined to get Lucky's house lights back. So I've got the wires that are from the light, like the way it came when I bought it, right? In the package, they're pretty thin wires. I've got this extra wire that I'm now splicing them together with, just some little thin butt connectors and some electrician's tape. Um, because the way it is where the fuse box is, the wires don't reach, right? So I got red and black, so it'll keep it nice and simple for positive and negative. But it's just a matter of, I already did the negative. So we cut off the positive, bye-bye. And I got some wire strippers here. We're gonna go to the littlest one here. And we're gonna take some of that shielding off. Boop, we get a nice spare wire. 
Okay, we got our butt connectors right over here. Real small ones. Slide the wire into the butt connector. Ooh. Grab the same crimpers, or the same strippers, I should say, and use the crimping feature that's on the bottom. These are a lot easier than the, uh, the big boys. Their big brothers are a little bit more resilient. All right, so we got our butt connector, then we have an end of our red wire extension. It's a little bit of a bigger gauge too, but that's fine. Strip some shielding off of him. Bye-bye. Grab our butt connector. Ooh, that's probably too much wire. Probably need to shrink, cut some more off. Yeah, just a little bit. Go. Oh. Okay, slide that red wire in there. Perfect. Toit like tiger. There we go. All right. So now we've got wire extensions. Oh, last step. I'm not mussing and fussing with heat shrink on this. I'm literally just taking electrician's tape and wrapping the butt connector up. So just like this. Pretty, pretty. So there's no butt connector showing. Everybody just calm down. And now I'm gonna use the light wires as my guide for I want where I want every, all the other wires to run. So I'm gonna want it to go up here on the wood. So it'll come in along these wires here because it's coming in right over there where that white wire goes. It's wrapping underneath the two by two there, or the almost two by two, I should say. Wires will come zip tied along here and then I'll have them hop up here and probably just go straight across. That might be too tight. Huh, maybe they come across the front. Maybe they're gonna come across this way instead. Yeah, that makes more sense. Okay, so we're gonna come across the front of the box. We got more room over here. So much more room for activities. Okay, get out of here, fan wire. Under that and over here. So there, that should be good. We're gonna cut these right there. Now, we have to add connectors so they can attach to the fuse box. Let's get these bad boys wired in. So I got the ends on them. I just went with these guys, simple slip on ones. The round eyelet ones are a little bit better because they are more secure, but whatever. So down here, this is our positive wire, obviously. And these are all of our positive towers. And it appears the negative towers. So. How I'm gonna do this, let's just go. Oh, blue's 15. Oh, is red 10? Yup, okay. So we're just gonna go with the lowest fuse because they're lights. So we'll put this guy here. And we'll put his negatives. This is the other thing. So slide the positive on there. There we go. Tighten her down. Nice. And we get our negative. Hey, and the lights are on too. So as soon as I connect this, I just gotta figure out which one I actually want this on because we've got a bunch of other stuff to wire as well. Let's put this guy way over here. Why? I don't know. Because we bloody well can. And we've got lights. Pack and lucky. Oh, that'll make the rest of this a little bit easier, I think. I think they're not as bright as they could be. Hang on. Ugh. I hope that's a setting and not something else that's wrong. <laughs> the remote has been back here in the drawer for a while. Brighter? I don't know, that's as bright as they go. Oh, okay, I'm just seeing things. I'm probably just used to that big light being in my face all day. Ah, welcome back to life, Lucky. You got a little bit of power. <laughs> So I'm back in here, here are those wires for the lights, right? Run down there. So then my, my plan is going to be is to get some loom and all of the wires that run here, we'll put them in the loom together. We're gonna attach it on the inside of this two by two, and then we'll have a bigger section of loom for the thicker wires there, obviously. And that'll just sort of make everything nice and tidy. Unfortunately, that is absolutely a future Matthew problem. I don't have any more in me other than That's it. That's all. This uh, this turned into a day of a lot of cursing, bloody fingers, and frustration. So 
I'm going to put a pin in it today. I will be tidying up now once I'm done here. Uh, and I'll get that stuff tomorrow at Silverton. Then I only have to make one trip into Silverton. So I'm going to make a shopping list. We'll put the loom on that list. We'll get our wood. And that'll be our day for tomorrow. And then we will start breaking ground, hopefully on some cupboards. So that is how I'm doing my electrical. There are many, many ways for you to do it. What I recommend is somebody chime in in the comments. If you've got questions, ask them here. Maybe other people can help as well. Uh, I'm not the best person to ask questions when it comes to this stuff. I will, I have always and will always figure things out on my own and just do it however I want to do it. So if we want to share some information in the comments, I think that's the best idea for this video. So get down there, mix it up, mingle, ask away, answer away. I am going to leave this one here. I'm going to finish this beer and probably crack another one. And start tidying up. And then Ash Cracker Dawn tomorrow. Well, Ash Cracker Silverton Building Supplies opening up. We'll get at it again. Until then, just go out there. Be just kidding. I was in I was in a mood for sure. Um, <laughs> but I was at every intention of ending the video and then I, I finished the outro and then I spent another hour and a half getting the van back to the state that it's currently in and wiring back power to not only those lights, but also my LED lights, although the remote stopped working. So this is the only way I have of turning on what are now the blue lights because I can't change them. So I gotta see if uh, swapping the battery makes a difference. And I got both fans wired back. So all that's left to do now is customize wiring for the fridge. We're not gonna worry about that right now. Um, and the diesel heater, of course. And then I did have a little like three banger, uh, 12 volt cigarette socket. I don't even know where I put that. It's probably outside somewhere. That was wired into the fuse box in the old build as well. I don't know if I'm gonna do that this time. Although, Ports would be nice. Um, but anyways, so this is what I did. Just temporarily, I had to get this place looking a little bit nicer. Uh, I could still, I could benefit from some more zip ties, but I'm out. So I zip tied everything up here just to sort of get it looking more or less how I will want it. And then under here, oh, let's just see. Oh yeah, I gotta get the, the, the Velcro did not last. <laughs> oh yeah, and we did definitely gain a little bit of space from remove, removing that leg. But as you can see right there, it is still preventing us from going all the way up to the bed. So maybe some Dremel work is in my future. I don't know, we'll see. Ah, but under here, oh, that's why we can't have nice things. Under here, this is what this is looking like now. So we got all of the, let's turn on the light. That's better. So there's all of our power wires coming in. I got them organized here as best I could, and then they all run down. Ignore the rat's nest of all of that stuff in just Ah, the fuse box. Looking sexy. Although, <laughs> the way that I put the main wires on, this thing fit on properly anymore, because it wants this wire to be out this way, but the lug that I have on it right there doesn't fit perfectly. It's rounded, not flat, so this thing isn't long for this world. Obviously, there's still plenty to do. I got to get the inverter wired in. I do have the shore power. Ooh, the fridge is not mounted. I got to be careful. Uh, I got the shore power box it's underneath there. There it is. That's where it's going to live. I know people are so worried about all of the heat that's going to be in this little support area for the fridge. Just relax. I got this. I got this. Um, and yeah, the diesel heater. I, I did want to do that today, but that just the day just completely got away on me. Electrical is not fun. It is, like I said earlier, very, very time consuming. Um, it's it, it feels good once you get it done. Um, and if I'm being completely honest, yes, I got rid of that one circuit breaker and I was talking about ordering that 75 amp fuse, but I just found that I have a hundred amp fuse, but it's that old style that I was complaining about. But in the interest of saving a little bit of money and not waiting, that's probably what I'm going to do. I might even, I might even finish the night off by doing that. Um, putting it here, so I'll have to cut those ends off and then we'll wire it in. We'll see if it'll fit. And then extending these wires 
so that it can uh, I can like wrap on this thing. I do need to read about this a little bit more. My old charger, I have a switch up on the dash, a little blue switch that I flick when I want the DC to DC charger to start charging. This doesn't have that unless you have a smalt, smalt. Mm -hmm. Let me try that again. <clears throat> this doesn't have that unless you have a smart alternator, apparently. Um, but I do want to try wiring the ignition wire in and see if it if it does work because I don't want this thing just kicking on all the time when Lucky starts up, you know? So still lots to do. And then of course, I got to figure out how I'm going to hide all of this because quite frankly, I like the openness of this, but I'm not a fan of the hanging wires, right? So I guess we can move these. Ooh, I can move the pot lights back a bit. Oh yeah, this one's only, these two are only out here. <clears throat> Give me a minute. <sighs> okay, well, the lights I have moved back. So that's great. I just gotta deal with this obnoxious wire here. But I was just trying to make, to see if the remote does work and if it was the battery. It doesn't control lights, but look what it does control. Yo, what? This is a space heater from my mom's house. There's an RGB light controller that doesn't control the lights. I wonder if I unplug this. Hang on. Let's see. Bye bye. Now will you work? Nay. You son of a stupid. <clears throat> Lights have moved back. They were just uh, up here with the, this like sticky 3M stuff. They've been up there basically since I moved into the van. So not too bad. Just peeled them off. Not so sure they will stay. Uh, I might need to get new stuff. Right now, they seem to be okay. It's not like they're heavy. So, yeah, that's all right. I had to bring the track down so I can get wires over to a curtain track. And now, yeah, there's a 3M backing on this little thing. And this is like, I don't know, it's like a junction for these lights. It's all part of the, the remote system, I think. Maybe stick that up there. Zip tie the wires up here. Bob's your uncle. The freaking LEDs. So. That's where all of this is at. And there we are. So that is done. I can't actually do any more in terms of uh, wiring the alternator into the charger because I don't have butt connectors that are big enough for those wires. So add it to the list of crap we gotta get in Silverton tomorrow. Now it is getting late. I am going to shut this down. Actually, come with me. This is how we have to shut it down right now. Unplug the night. That motion light we will deal with later. That motion light is probably gonna go on the lid here. So when I open this up, I got light in there, but the backing is no longer sticky. Add it to the list. We need 3M tape for our motion light. Where is the remote? No, not the one that's on top of the fridge. The other one, there it is. Buried underneath the tools. Ah, good night, Lucky. So sorry for all of the poking around in you I did today. Now I will say, until the next one, go out there, be happy, be creative, be yourselves, most importantly, be positive, and remember, only dead fish go with the flow. Now I'm going to end this how I started it, and take this inside to clean it, so I don't have a nasty surprise in the morning.